Hey everybody, hope you're doing well. My name is David Wilkerson and this is Surplus Funds 101. Just want to say thank you for liking the video, subscribing to the channel, and if you haven't already done it, do it now. You guys, I've been uh, in the off-market real estate and asset recovery space now for a little bit over 10 years. And so I give you guys all my top tricks um, and things that I've learned over the years. Um, So subscribe to the channel. I promise it's gonna be worth it But you guys I wanted to make a video tonight and show you guys My point system that I have for all of my VAs um, For when I'm critiquing them, you know I think that one of the biggest questions that I get nowadays is hey, where do I get VAs? What should I do with them? How do I train them? What should I expect from them? How much should I pay them? Yada 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 and the thing about VAs that you guys have to understand is, I mean, I mean, th- there's a lot of benefits besides just the low pay. You know, they're going to be incredibly loyal. You know, they're going to show up on time. It's an insane. It's probably the best form of leverage you can possibly get, and, in my opinion, or one of the top ones. You know, but they're VAs. They still need to be trained. And so this is just one of the pieces of the puzzle. Okay, each one of you guys are gonna have to go and create your own system. I mean, I could give you some of these slides or just kind of plug it in uh, for you guys, but um, this is just one of the pieces of the big puzzle I've created, but this is a piece that I personally created, you know, and I I highly suggest that you guys do something similar or just download this. I can probably provide it in the um, Google Drive link or something in the description of the video. But uh, when I'm training the VAs every day, at the end of shift, I always look, well, I have my account manager do it as well, but I always look at <clears throat> the metrics um, and the KPIs but behind each caller so I know if they're slacking, if they, or what they're doing good and what they're doing bad, you know, because <clears throat> if, if you're not on track with these callers, if you're not listening to who they are or chiming in every now and again, you won't ever know if they're making progress, if they're having good conversations, bad conversations, where to critique them or what to do. And so this is kind of a guideline that I've created on, you know, some of the things that you can help critique the VAs with. Because, I mean, honestly, you guys, if you're going to hire somebody, I would, I mean, you hire them the right way. But I would have an allotted budget of about three months worth of their fees seen aside to, to work with them because you're going to have to train them and doctor them into your process regardless of what you do you know and a lot of them are going to have experience that's going to help um but it's little things like this so i'm just going to do a quick little overview with everybody um you know and this is just our point set set your our point system it, it equals up to 100 points total okay so the very first section is the call flow um the introduction that's 2.5 points and all these are 2.5 points, but the opening statement, speaking with the account holder, just verifying, hey, just want to make sure that you lived at 1.23 um, Sunshine Avenue. Is this John Smith? Boom. Um, and then setting the appointment and then following up. As I've said in a lot of these other videos, you guys, um, a lot of these deals are not going to come on the very first phone call. It's going to be multiple contact points, lots of follow up, and so you got to get good at that, you know. But with that being said, there are the unicorn deals, and you never want to overlook them. I mean, there are people, surprisingly, well, it's not surprisingly, there's actually one of the best parts of the industry that will literally call you up randomly. You will go over to their house, you will sign the contract, and it'll be the easiest money you've made. Unicorns are there. They don't come very often, but when they do pop up, we have systems and processes in place. We do not like to let them sit. When somebody's hot and they want to buy, you close those motherfuckers down as quick as you can. Okay, now here's the next question as far as the qualifying questions is 20 points. Um, We want to make sure we have the property address. We want to make sure we that they've somewhat identified some motivation that the person's going to have with working with us. Okay, another one, this is huge. You guys should write this down. You know, have you guys had any other family members who have passed away in the recent history that you might be in their death benefit for? I can't tell you guys how many times I've gone to collect an account for somebody, double checked it, and found that they had not one, not two, but many other ones. And it's cool to collect one account where you think that you might be making $2,000, but when you do a double check and that $2,000 payout to you turns out to be 15000 you guys, I'm telling you, it's worth it always to create a mandatory system or process to double check for other accounts for the same person's name. 
Um, so that's why I have that in there. And then again, just verifying with the state websites to the best of your ability that the funds are still there. And then another one, this is a kind of a tricky one. Uh, the time of day that the claimant is going to be the most available. Now, you're running your own operation. I'm assuming that lots of you guys are one man shows, right? And so you're in charge of doing the acquisitions, the dispositions, scheduling the notaries, doing the accounting, doing the marketing, and everything, right? So one of the things that, again, I'm such a nerd when it comes to this entire process, I don't want to have a hiccup at all throughout any um, part of the entire process from start to finish. I like to figure out when that person is the most available. You know, like if I know they work a nine to five job, right? I'm just going to tee up the notary um, or I'm going to at least keep that information for myself so I can know to give that to the notary if they're struggling with communicating with them. You know, you can just be like, hey, if you're in the area, why don't you just pop on by and knock on their door and see if you can get it done. Um, things like that. But it's just, it's just more information for you to be able to execute the deal and have the least amount of hiccups um, because you're going to want to find out when that person is the most available to have a notary come by you know, um, and tee it up. Now, you guys, as far as um, handling objections go, I don't have all the objections down here. There's probably a, a top core six of them, but um, what I wanna listen for um, on the telephone call is when the VA is acknowledging that the customer has a problem and providing a solution and then knowing how to move on without that having to come up. You can kind of tell uh, when you're talking to a consumer if, they've really felt like their answer was addressed. You can kind of tell it by looking at their face, right? Um, and then, uh, yeah, just they can provide a solution to move on. And then here's another 20 points. It's just call handling. It's active listening, tone of voice, pacing, and then conversational and empathetic. Um, like I set up at the very top, you guys, with there being multiple conversation points that are going to need to take place on each account before that person can have the paperwork signed by a notary you know it, like with that many follow points it's always best that your vas are friendly kind cheerful happy really easy to talk to you know they remember all the important details of the past conversation you know and, and it just it just builds into the rapport and just making it easier to close them you know and then 10 points you guys Call disposition, all right? Correct lead tagging, that's huge. You know, when you guys are buying data and you're giving it to a VA and they're calling it, you wanna make sure that that VA knows, hey, this is a, a, a kind of phone call that we need to never ever call again. Okay, this is one we need to follow up with. This is one that they didn't answer. So it's really important that they have a clear understand based upon your criteria, what a disposition for a do not call lead or whatever it might be is. Okay, and then the very last part is just the conversion rate, hot leads, warm leads, and referrals. Um, so we just kind of track it that way. What I have my VA manager do, and I do it as well too, um, <clears throat> is I just mark down here uh, what I noticed was done or not done, and then any potential notes. This also gets logged in the employee section uh, that I have for each one of my VAs, right? And so if there ever it is the discrepancy, you know, and I do need to terminate somebody, I have plenty of evidence. But uh, you guys, again, this is literally like one of the 30 things that I've created um, to help not only manage, but train and systemize everything when it comes to VAs and every doing everything online. But uh, I know I'm all over the place. You guys, I'm getting better at uh, making presentations, so thank you for um, sticking around with me. But if you guys found any value in this, uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and um, other than that, um, you guys, hope you're doing well. Bye.